All right, everybody, we're uh, day five or day six of being home here. I'm going around the world, uh, no jet lag anymore. So we're ready to go flying. I'd like to, uh, today I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the uh, kind of upcoming shoot that I'm doing about uh, communications, because that seems to be the biggest uh, thing that people comment on is how terrified they are talking on the radio. And it's really, you know, obviously I do it all the time, but once you get used to what you can expect the controller to say and what you're supposed to say, it's just like having a conversation with your neighbor. So it's, it's real simple stuff. So I think what we're going to do today is we're going to leave Boeing Field and we're going to head up to uh, Anacortes, 7-4, the Anacortes, Washington. It's, uh, it's like 60 miles north here. It's, I think it's called 7-4 Sierra is the, uh, the identifier for the airport. So I've got it on four flight over here and you can see right here, Anacortes 7-4 Sierra. So what we can do is kind of cool with four flight. I'm going to show you a bunch of different stuff today, but with that, we got 7-4 Sierra. You click on more. I'm going to push direct to boom. See that line right there? And I can push this little button up here and then it recenters down here. So a couple things going on today, going out of here. Um, a little bit windy taking off to the Point south. November 8, 5, 6, oh. the Sierra. Uh, see this old dot right here, TFR. It's called a TFR temporary flight restriction. So there's a baseball game going on down there. And uh, ever since 9-11, you know, ever since 9-11, they don't want you flying in TFRs unless you have permission to fly it. Well, there's an agreement with Boeing Field and the uh, stadium because it's so close. Of uh, Usually they'll give you a discrete transponder code. And again, all this phraseology, is, I will explain it. That's what I'm doing for the next five days is shooting this communications video and how that whole thing works. So within, by the time I'm done, hopefully you'll completely understand uh, how the whole thing works. I think you were, it's really pretty straightforward. So anyhow, before we get going, a quick shout out this morning, I was, I was feeling a little sluggish. So I stopped by this coffee joint and uh, these two nice people inside made me a fine cuppy and it's called West Seattle Grounds and we're actually flying right over it. So West Seattle Grounds, it's on, uh, what the hell is that called? It's on, uh, it's on Instagram. I'm not an Instagrammer. So, uh, I don't know if you can say hello or not, but apparently it is WSG coffee at West Seattle Grounds at WSG coffee. So if you're uh, sitting over in Iraq and you like saying hello to those guys they make a fine cup and it certainly perked me up so anyhow going out of here we might be able to uh, might be able to point that out um, anyhow let's, let's get going and uh, I'll kind of explain just roughly as we go kind of what's happening but I'm not going to get into super detail this first flight I just want to show you the different types of airspace you can uh, uh, deal with going up here right now uh, Boeing field it's called class Delta airspace and again the whole airspace thing is kind of a different video, but but uh, I will explain how that works throughout this uh, series. So it's probably going to be, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half long video by the time I get done with it. But anyhow, we just fired up the plane and already checked the weather. I called flight service and asked them what the weather was going to do. And then I looked at four flight two to see what uh, the ceilings and visibility were. But before we get going, we have to get the altimeter setting. It'd be nice to know which way the winds are blowing. Can you give me your call sign one more time? I don't have the clearance yet. Be nice to know which way the winds are blowing uh, and the velocity of the winds. You know, is it one knot or is it 15 knots? Is it going to be gusting going out here? I'm looking at the windsock and I can tell it's a pretty good breeze today. So, but right now we're going to listen to ATIS, this thing called ATIS, Automatic Terminal Information Service. And we're going to dial that up. Mr. 1-9-er, 2.9-er, altimeter 30, 0, 0. ILS runway 1 4 right, approaching you, landing and departing, runway 1 4 right, now running 1 4 left. Fire aircraft, state direction of flight. Some his perch needs to see tack and boarding airport. Point traffic above you, on final. Now to Airman, runway 14 right, runway special lights, out of service. All aircraft readback holds for instruction. Lies on us contact, you have information. Whiskey. Hey, Whiskey, it changes weather at 55 past the hour. Okay, so what I got what I got out of that is the altimeter setting 3000. And you set this in this little tiny window here, 3000, and the winds are 190 at 9, so uh, they're going to be taken off on runway 14. And again, we'll get into that whole thing about how you listen to ATIS, how you determine what the winds are. And if you don't see anybody taking off, you're like, well, I don't know which way they're going. You can pretty much get an idea by listening. The ATIS will tell you what the uh, runway, what the active runway is, but there's some other weather 
weather uh, information service is called ASOS and AWAS, and they will not really tell you what runway is in use. They, all they're going to give you is the uh, the weather at the airport. But in ATIS, there's a guy in the tower that does that, like I said, every 55 minutes past the hour, unless the weather changes, something significant. A lot of times it might just be a runway change or going in the other direction, but sometimes it's significant weather. Hong Kong, ooh, it's always significant weather this time of year. <laughs> it's nasty. Um, so anyhow, let me give these guys a call because it's information whiskey. Uh, I'm going to tell them that we have whiskey and that we're, uh, we're northwest bound. And um, I'm going to tell them that I want what's known as a right downwind departure. And again, we'll get into the, the meat and potatoes of all that stuff as we go along. But right now, I just want to kind of have you go along in a flight and see what some of the different types of airspace are. So again, this is Class Delta, Boeing Tower. I'm on the ground frequency right now. There's a ground controller you got to talk to to get out to the runway. And then there's the tower controller for the takeoff portion. So anyhow, the call sign on this, 942 on Echo. And it's a Cessna Skyhawk. So here's what it is. Uh, boy, ground Skyhawk 942 and I go southwest parking northwest bound with whiskey. Signature. I mean, two at the same time, November 440 Quebec here, one ground. Taxi to signature via Alpha. That was blocked. Signature via Alpha 440 Quebec here. Sure, no problem. Other graph calling on ground say again? That's me. Yeah, it's Skyhawk 942 and I go southwest parking northwest bound with whiskey. We're at 9421 Echo, Bowen Ground. You said you're at Southwest Parking? That's firm. Number 21 Echo, thanks for any 14 right at Bravo 5 or Bravo 4. Taxi via Bravo. Advise which one you'd like. Okay, 14 right. I'll take uh, Bravo 4 for 21 Echo. Number 21 Echo, thanks. Bravo 4. Uh, Bravo 4. All right, so clear to the right, clear to the left. Always looking around. Talked about that in another video. And the taxiway is clear. So this taxiway. Going down, uh, Bravo. Angel at Alpha 8. Uh, taxi he told me to taxi via Kenmore. Bravo. So again, we'll get into the Number whole airport Echo, diagram Echo, thing. Echo, Echo, going to Kenmore Arrow at the southeast corner. The whole airport diagram yeah. thing Echo, and Echo, how Echo, to Arrow, look Alpha. at an airport diagram yeah. and then looking at where you're parked on the airport and have a great idea before you even talk to the ground controller or what taxiway he's going to tell you to use to get to the runway. So. Um, that's a biggie. Again, they're, Tango, you know, when they hit you with, uh, you know, Skyhawk 2 and Echo, you taxi via, you know, Echo Mike, Sierra, Tango, Delta Delta. Yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, what? <laughs> so, so that's just really a standard thing of, of um, what happens and when you're... Number 2 and Echo for your northwest departure. Are you looking for a left down one or a right down one today? I take a right down one for Sky 2 and Echo. Number 2 and Echo, you're, it's a close and right down one out or below 800 feet uh, over the river or east of it. Correct. Okay, so basically what he's saying is, would I like to take off and go to the left and depart, take off, turn left, left downwind departure, or take off and turn right and go right downwind? At this airport, when you do a right downwind departure, because there's an airspace called Class B, Bravo for B for big jets, and uh, I'm looking at airplanes right now, they're going into SeaTac Airport, and you cannot fly into that airspace, not without permission, and so going out of here, uh, they want you to remain clear and below of that airspace. So that's why he kind of friendly, gave me a friendly reminder that it's uh, uh, at or below 800 feet on that side. The other side of the airport when you take off and you're going downwind, again, we'll explain what all that means, but uh, it's 1,000 feet on that, si that side. If you do a left turn, if it's a right turn, it's um, uh, 800 feet. So again, I wanted to go right downwind because uh, we're going to go fly by the uh, coffee joint. <laughs> So, <laughs> all righty, so I'm coming down here to Bravo 4, and again, before we take off, I'm going to do a run-up just to make sure the engine's in good shape. I already did the pre-flight inspection, which is the outside walk-around, and everything was attached, so everything's good. You can see here, we're pulling up to Bravo 4, runway 14R, that's 14 right, and 32L means 32 left, so 14 right is the one that we're going to be using. That's the one that goes south now. All right, so the run-up. 1500 RPM, magneto check, carburetor heat check, ammeter check, that all checks out really nice, and I'll do a flight control check, there we go, flight controls check, the doors are locked, all that's good, the fuel's on both and the trim selector's good, but again, remember, checklist everybody, that's a biggie, um, I do it in the 777, I still do it in this, you just have to might forget something, man. What if I forgot the fuel selector? What if I had it turned off and I took off? Usually I'd have like five minutes of gas, 300 feet, the engine probably quit. 
So uh, anyhow, cabin doors, windows, latch, seat belts are good. Flight controls, they check. Flight instruments, I have set. Mixture is set. Trim tabs are good. Fuel selector valve is on both. Mags check. RV check. Suction gate check. Engine instruments check. Ambient air throttle lights check. And radios are good. And going to transponder. So I switched. Wind. Uh, Boeing Tower, Skyac 942 and Echo Bravo 4, ready for departure uh, northwest bound. That's a 942 and Echo Boeing Tower, make close in right downwind departure, runway 14 right at Bravo 4, cleared for takeoff, wind 210 at 11. 14 right at Bravo 4, cleared for takeoff for the right close in departure, uh, downwind departure, Skyac 2 and Echo. All right, clear down there. Again, you clear for takeoff, just make sure that no one's landing. I mean, everyone's human here, you know? I don't see anybody there. Landing lights are on, strobes are on. Whenever you enter the runway, make sure all your lights are on. And then line up with the center line, which is the white stripe. And here we go. I have the power. Just looking at the RPM gauge to make sure it comes up. Kind of a windy one out here. All right, 60 knots. Pull back. That's breezy. Look at that little crab I have into the... The right downwind departure, that's what it looks like. See, I took off and made a right turn. Zero at one two. Took off and made a right turn, and I'm 600 feet, and I'm still slowly climbing. Yeah, it's kind of a bumpy sucker out here. Yeah, you can see an airplane right in front of us, amongst all the bug guts on the window. Uh, and uh, you can see that guy going into sea tab. So, okay, so anyhow, uh, now getting out of here, I just want to constantly, I'm going to maintain this frequency, Boeing Tower frequency. Uh, because if there's any traffic that's inbound, they'll call that traffic out to me. They'll tell me that they're inbound, and they'll tell that guy likewise that I'm outbound and at what altitude. So, coming down here, we're going to take a look at this. We've got, uh, coming to the TFR, Boeing Tower knows we're here, so all, all is well there. Once we get out here, we're able to climb up. See where it says 10,000? It says 118 below it. I have to either be below 1,800 feet, you can see my little airplane right there, or above 10,000 feet to not be in that class problem. Right. I do believe I turn left Alpha 4, cross runway 1, so, left, and in contact ground. I can fly up as high, you don't want to go to 1,800 feet. 7, 8, Mike, runway 1, 4, left, start with the option, went 2, 1, 0, uh, 1, All right, zero. so this is West Seattle up here, where Captain Scott lives. That's a 2 1 echo of traffic. Beam West Point inbound on the ILS, a Phenom 2200. Yeah, looking for traffic, Scott 2 1 echo. Hey, so see how that worked. You told me there's traffic inbound on the ILS. That's a lady over there. So here's West Seattle. I'm climbing out, I'm climbing out. And we're at 1,000 feet. I'm going to climb up to about just under 1,500 feet. I don't want to climb up to the 1,800 feet, right? Again, still monitoring the tower frequency, and uh, you know until we're out of this area. Okay, so let's make the turn. And this is West Seattle, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see if we can find that coffee joint. It's right in front of us. Okay, here it is, right down here. West Seattle. Two zero zero at eight one right five. Let's see how it's going to be. Right now, we're on my one full right, clear to land. Oh, it's actually right there. Wind 180 at 8, cut one five. Thank you for the coffee. One full right, off we go. Yeah, stop by, say hello to those guys. They're really nice. They have pretty tasty coffee. So, anyhow, back to the flying thing. See, I'm going outbound. I'm get up to 1,800 feet, right? So I'm only going to climb 1,500 feet. And again, the reasons I don't want to go right up to 1,800 because. You know what, if you hit a nobular or a turbulence, it's going to just shove you right up to, uh, right into that class Bravo airspace. So this class Delta that we just left, that's Boeing Field, right? That's their type of airspace. It's called class Delta, and you can kind of think of airspace. Uh, class A is the stuff that's high altitude for astronauts that are flying up there. That's all above 18,000 feet. And uh, B is, you know, wherever there's big airplanes. So B's for big jets. Charlie, there's... Uh, corporate aircraft, uh, you know, so you got B for big jets, uh, C for corporate aircraft, and D, D, you're going to get a mix of everything. You're going to get general aviation, which is what me, what I'm in, means what I'm in, and, uh, 
and uh, but you're also going to get the big jets mixed in with that. So that's what class delta is. Uh, class delta is typically around an airport that has a control tower. So again, you know, when we we're going to get, I'm going to get into that whole thing where you're where you're dealing with airports with control towers, but there's also uh, you know the airports that don't have control towers. I'm going to explain both completely in a way that I can hopefully you have total understanding of how this all works. That airspace, by the way, that the controller was talking about, that's over there. I know that guy's clear on the right. And how do I know that? Because I can see him right here. See that, see that minus seven? I can see him on my iPad, which is really cool. It's a thing called ADS-B, and uh, it's, it's a weird name. It's basically a, a little signal generator in my airplane. All the other airplanes have to have it by 2020, but it basically shows my tail number, my altitude, and all that stuff. Well, it shoots a signal to the ground. It's also GPS based for accuracy, but I'm, it also, I can tell that guy's got it because I can see his tail number, uh, you know, his N number. So, and again, N numbers are just, you know, U.S. registered aircraft. So, so all right, so let me push that button and center us again. So I got a guy 500 feet above me He's right there. See the beauty of ADS-B? I mean, it's fantastic. You're, the whole idea is you're still supposed to look outside. I mean, we're visual VFR flight rule, so, you know. That's a 7 mic, only one for left, clear for the Because we're VFR, you're supposed to be looking out the window, but this thing is nice. ADS-B is nice. Auto, auto, automated dependent surveillance broadcast. You know, and again, it's an aviation thing, and, you know, basically, it, it, Know, it tells other airplanes where I'm at by this little signal that it generates in this tiny little box down here called the transponder. So, one tower jet project to the railroad inbound from Jugak with. So anyhow, what we're doing is we're just heading northbound, and we're going to go see how much of a headwind we have today. Option three six seven. Yeah, it's actually a nice little tailwind. Nice little tailwind down here. So. Again, down here, see this 3,000, you can see where it says 10,000, and then one point I'm going to hold on to it. If I'm above 10,000 or below 3,000 feet, Mike Whiskey, Boeing Tower, right. runway as long as I'm below 3,000 feet, zero, zero, nine, 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 one, five. I'm staying out of that class Bravo airspace. Hey, you can't go, zero, Mike you can't go into Bravo class Boeing Bravo tower, without a runway one, four, right. And then also, you know, again, there's a lot of different things that you kind of learn. You learn as you go along in the video. One of them is how long do you need to listen to this uh, tower controller? You know, do you have to stay on it for the next 40, 50 miles till you can't hear him anymore? You know, what? Can you leave the frequency? You know, can you change your frequency? Possible mechanical improvements off the Boeing plant at or below 800 feet. Long landing approved if you'd like. Thanks. So you need some yapping, and yapping, yapping. So I'm going to change frequency because we're going northbound. We're going to go by Payne Field. It's where they build the 747. Okay, so, so I just want to listen to. Oh, departure. Good day, 670, Mike Whiskey. I just want to listen to his frequency here. If there's anybody 3295, you can see his frequency right here. One Payne Field, 13295. So I said 13295. Now let's see where we're at in terms of airspace here. I'm right on the edge, right? Right on the edge of this one right here, so I can go up to 4,000. But I've got some clouds ahead of me, so I'm just probably going to go to 2,500 feet today. I think that's a good. Uh, that's, and again, another thing is you go along with the communications. One thing that's always good to do is just to monitor. That's the one going. If you're by an airport with a control tower, change just to run monitor uh, that one control six tower frequency. Right, runway 16 right, clear to land. Wind 160. And that's zero you know, typically when you're two, below two. maybe three, four thousand feet. You know, just so you can hear what's going on in the. Uh, area. So right now, you know, could I, could I have made a radio call to Boeing Tower and told them that I wanted a frequency for what's known as called flight following uh, while I'm going north down? Yeah, I could have, but uh, I don't want to get too swamped on this flight. It's a weekday, and there, are, there aren't a million airplanes out here a week, weekend. It's nice to get it. Um, it's also dependent. The controllers in the Seattle area get pretty busy, uh, you know, during the morning, midday, and evening rush, and a lot of times what happens is if you ask for flight following, and basically what that's asking is, you're asking for the control.
controller's help. The guy with the radar screen in front of him, you're asking for his help uh, to look out, help him look out, help you look out for other aircraft. Oh, traffic and safety. And uh, it's, it's a great Tango. thing to, great for me to use, and system. I use it as often as I can. Two, one, but uh, sometimes the controller's too busy, two, he'll just tell you uh, that he's unable. And when he tells you that he's unable, it's just kind of, you know, you, you, you take it personally, but okay. don't. <laughs> it just, it's nothing personal that they have against you. One, uh, square the, square the turn to final, please, for a serious party. So you can hear this, I'm still listening to the pain field tower. Tango, pain off field's, field's, field's off our center. right side over there, about down with no, nine, eight, nine miles. So, coming up here, and now on this class Bravo airspace, you can see we have a seven and a five, so if I'm below 5,000 feet or above 7,000 feet, I can fly that. You can see how the farther away from the uh, the SeaTac uh, main airport there, the higher you can go, you know. And you can see why, it's big jets coming in there, just descending down in there. So, so now what we do have coming up ahead of us is a naval air station, right? Well, guess what this flies out of there? It's, it's a hot button item right now. Just High speed jets, right? We'll right. On the right. On the so because we got F-18s going out of there, it's kind of nice to know uh, yeah, want to want where to they're at, right? Good idea. But the other thing is there's this airspace, and it's Class Charlie airspace. And uh, or again, around Class Charlie airspace, Bravo again, big airplanes. And a lot of it has to do with the amount of traffic coming in and out of there and the size of the airplanes. So, you know, any big airport is Class B. So uh, this is Class C. It's called Woodby Naval Air Station. And there's a frequency that I'm looking for you know, on the chart. And it's right here. Contact Woodby Approach within 20 nautical miles on 120.7. So I'll dial in 120.7 here. And so when we're up the roadways, again, I'll push on this button right here and it tells me right where I'm at again. You can see right here, I'm, this is my pink, that pink line right there, I don't know, magenta, pink to me. But uh, you can see this circle up here, that's Whitby's airspace. And I'm going to have to give them a call. I could go below for their airspace, you can see the numbers here, I could go above 4,000 feet or below 1,300 feet, right? But then I'm down here, scud running around, you know, look at all this water, well, I don't like, I don't like being low and over the water, you know, engine quits, that's one thing, but number two, again, not worrying about the phraseology and talking to these controllers, it's relatively painful, again, once you know exactly what you're supposed to say, it's, it's really easy, so, I want to talk to this controller. Don't fly along and think, man, I don't want to talk to those guys because I don't know what they're going to tell me. Uh, just take the proactive attitude of, I know what to say, and again, we'll get into how many different things they can tell you, right? It's not like there's a hundred different things they can tell you. Basically, it's either yes or a no, you know? And uh, we want to fly through the airspace, yes or no changes a little bit though with the different types of airspace. Class Bravo has always got to be a yes. Yes, you're welcome to enter our airspace. The rest of these guys, it's a little bit, the rules are a little bit different, a little less stringent as Class Bravo. Yet, you still have to make the call. You can't just fly through Class or C airspace or Class B airspace. So we're coming up uh, approved. Coming up to Whidbey, I'm going to switch the frequency to 120.7 like we saw on the screen over there. So now we're on 120.7 and we are right down here where the little green line is. And I'm about 20 miles south and so that's kind of when they wanted to call. So again, there's a couple different techniques on how to call. Uh, my radio phraseology is really brief because I have done this a few times, you know, and uh, I don't like to tie up the radio, so I don't get on and say a whole lot of stuff, and I'll get into that of what my way is and what other ways are that I've heard, and uh, basically you just don't want to tie up a radio frequency, because this guy might be giving an approach clearance to an airport or, you know, talking to somebody that's on the approach inbound, he might be talking to some F-18 separating from other traffic. So 
So when you switch the frequency, I'm on 120.7, when you start switch over to that frequency, you don't want to just immediately push your microphone button and start talking because you might have blocked the controller talking to an airplane or an airplane talking to the controller. So when you change the frequency, give it a second, if you don't hear anyone talking, then go ahead and make the call. So anyhow, I'm going to call these guys right now. 120.7, it's called Would Be Approach. Yeah, it would be approached Skyhawk 9-4, Joe and Echo. Skyhawk 9-4, 2-1, Echo would be approached, would be altimeter 3 0, zero, zero. that's the request. Uh, 3 triple zero, about 15 uh, southeast to uh, Anacortes at 2.5. Skyhawk 2-1, Echo, Squawk 0 4 six, two. 0462, Skyhawk 2 and Echo. 0462. All right, that 0462, don't have a video of it right now, but there's a little box down here. Skyhawk 2 and Echo, Ritter Cossack, would be Air Park, 5 miles north, 2,500 indicated. Uh, position checks 2 and Echo. So, what, what just happened there was I'm flying, I'm trying to get into his airspace, right? It's a class Charlie airspace. So, I just called him up and said, heard what I said, you know, would be approached Skyhawk 942 and Echo. And uh, it varies controller to controller up here, but um, instead of getting on the radio and reading off this dissertation of where I'm at, altitude I'm at, how far away I'm at, all that sort of thing, because I don't know if he's busy or not, I'm just going to call him up and say what I did, would be approached Skyhawk 942 and Echo. And uh, he wasn't busy, so he's able to call me back. If he was busy, he might have said, uh, you know, Skyhawk 2 and Echo, Skyhawk 942 and Echo, Skyhawk 2 and Echo, stand by. Uh, or he could have said, you know, remain clear of the airspace, you know, because I'm trying to go through his airspace. But I uh, uh, got a hold of the guy, and you saw how that was. Well, he gave me the, he said, Squawk 0462, right? So I dialed down here in this little 0462, four-digit thing in this four-digit box that I have down here. And it bang, showed up on his radar, and uh, and uh, so he said radar contact, and then read my position back, which is what I was just over. And so I basically said, yeah, you're you picked me up. Uh, that's where I'm at. You know, then by the way, crazy all you position checks. So again, um, the different the differences in uh, D Delta Charlie starting to kind of get an indication that Bravo is the big guy where the big jets go, right? So you just have to really, uh, you just don't want to mess around with their airspace, but you don't want to mess around with this type of airspace either, or Charlie or Class Delta, because unless you basically have an invitation to go into it, you know, uh, an invitation through having talked to them, and, I'll, you know, we'll get into that whole thing about what's the, what the requirements are to be able to go into it, uh, you just don't fly into their airspace, and don't think that you can in the old days, people used to just turn their transponder, that's that four-digit code that shows up on their on their radar, and just tr turn it off. You don't, don't turn it off and try and fly through the airspace. It's just not, not cool at all, because you got F-18s out there going Mach 2, you know, and you want to have this transponder on. Number one, it's illegal to turn it off. And uh, number two, you know, you can't fly through their airspace without this thing turned on. It's just illegal asking for trouble. So, anyhow, right now we are currently 20 miles from Anacortes. We got some rain over here because it's June. The last week it's been super sunny, but I was too jet lagged to fly until I went and had myself a coffee today at uh, West Seattle Grounds at WSG Coffee. Yeah. Super nice people, and it's been open for, I guess, about eight months. I just went there the other day after a six-mile walk, and I was like, man, I'm hungry, and I'm thirsty, and I need some caffeine and sugar. <laughs> so, so I found it the other day after this big walk. And uh, so I was like, wow, it's a pretty tasty coffee. Nice people. I'm going to go back, and, uh, you know, we have Starbucks, obviously, started in Seattle, and uh, West Seattle Grounds did, too. So <laughs> who knows? All right, so we got a little rain shower. Today. Phoenix 55 five would be approach would be out from the rain zero, 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 to All right. 8, 000, expect the PAR. It's kind of cool again. You can see the direction of airplanes. Here's me 
this green circle in theory is my gliding distance. Okay, 255 Echo gonna... is now current duty, runway 25, wind 160 at 7, ceiling broken 6,000. I'm going to take that glide thing off, it drives me up golf. You can see this traffic over here, plus 16, November 9254 Charlie, 1700 feet above me, he's over there, you know, 10 miles. Phoenix, five, five, you can look 25, all you want, you'll never see half of these guys. All right, a little bit of rain over there. Uh, 2 one echo maintaining VFR flighting, 350 vectors for traffic. Okay, 35's riding, uh, 2 one echo. Yeah. All right, well, see how that works. See, not only am I, I'm in his airspace, he's got somebody out here he doesn't want me getting near, so he gave me a heading to fly. But you can see that these guys, and sometimes they'll give you an altitude, you know, maintain at or above so-and-so altitude, you know, so many feet. Uh, in this case, he gave me a heading, which is fine, because. I don't want to go that way because it takes me into a rain shower. But again, you know, if you're flying along here and the guy tells you to fly a, a heading that would take you into a rain shower and you can't see, no, 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 you don't. <laughs> just tell him unable. Just do a 180. You know, say, tell him you can do a 180, but don't. You're not on an instrument flight plan and if you don't have an instrument rating. Even if you have an instrument rating, you don't have an instrument rating. Phoenix 55 just to maintain 6,000. You don't have a clearance to fly in. You know, you just don't have a instrument clearance, so you just can't go pop into a cloud, and don't let a controller steer you into a cloud, you know, that's, uh, that's just not the way it works at all. So we're coming up to, uh, kind of where we're at, we're about, uh, I don't know, 15 miles from right now, our destination, and our destination is right at the edge of this guy's airspace, so we're going to Anacortis, the frequency is 12825, see that, 12825, so I'm going to dial that in there. Skyhawk 21 Echo, can you say bases in your area? Hey, yeah, it looks like they're about uh, 3,000. 21 Echo, Roger. All right, so, yeah, I mean, this heading worked out pretty good. Uh, this 350. Skyhawk 21 Echo, maintain VFR and a fly heading at 330 now. Okay, uh, 330 heading, Skyhawk 200. All right, cool, 330. Phoenix 55, traffic 1 moving to 12 o'clock, 6 Because the Whitby, you can't see it right now. The Naval Air Station, just right. off to the left. Sony Hill, Anacortis 7 4 Sierra, that's the airport we're going at. 241 means it's 241 feet. Phoenix 55, elevation maintain at 3,000. L3, that means it's light at 3,000 feet long, and then it's 20, 25 is the frequency in the RP. Phoenix 55, frequency uh, called traffic is now no factor. Means, the uh, right Skyhawk, however, is still off here 11 o'clock, 8 miles northbound. Right pattern uh, for runway 1A. RP1, it's kind of hard to see. Phoenix 5-5, five, five, turn left heading 2-5-0. Skyhawk 2-1 echo traffic, 3 o'clock, 6 miles southwestbound, 3,600, descending F-18. Yeah, look at Skyhawk 2 it. I see him on here. It's kind of an interesting day flying out here, but as you can see, that's why I like talking to these controllers, because they want you to talk to them, you know. Phoenix 5 Skyhawk 2-1 Echo, altitude restriction removed, radar services terminated, squawk VFR, frequency change approved. 2-1 so Echo, thanks for your help. 5-6, Phoenix 5-6. I'm done and he said radar service is terminated, so uh, again, it's not because he doesn't like me, he's like, hey, it's terminated. It's because uh, he doesn't need to give me uh, information about traffic anymore. So now, I am... Five miles east of Anacortes Airport, right? Well, Anacortes Airport, like, you know, Boeing field had a control tower and a um, ATIS and told us what the winds were. This airport doesn't have anything. They have a windsock. So, they have a windsock and they have a common traffic advisory frequency. And it's this frequency that anyone landing at this airport is going to be listening to, right? It's that 12825. Boom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call on 12825 and tell them that I'm 5 east inbound for landing. And according to traffic, Sky Act 942 and I go 5 east inbound at 2,000. So I'm at 2,000 feet and inbound. The reason I give them the altitude is just in case the, you know, someone's outbound, he's, he's, he's heading this way, you know, and he's heard that I'm a Skyhawk and I'm 5 miles east and I'm coming in for a landing. So I'm going to go down. So airport elevation here again was uh, 241 feet. So rounded off, it'll be a 1,200 foot pattern altitude. Just add a thousand feet to it, makes a pattern altitude. Again, we're, I'm going to get into traffic patterns and airspace entry requirements, as well as communications for all.
towered and non-towered airports because it's a different, you know, it just is different. And again, uh, another thing too is I'll explain everything that's in the Emirates, Airman's Information Manual about what they want you to say. And because uh, it's a little bit different, you know, you read it and you're like, eh, maybe I want to say a little bit more. There's no hard, fast rule as far as what you can and can't say. There's some stuff they don't want you to say because it just, uh, it's kind of repetitive and I'll get into all that thing. But now we're coming up over the top of the Anacortes Airport right here. And I need to go see what the Windsox is doing. Coming over point so there's a circle down there. There's a circle in the ground down there on uh, just off to the west side of the runway in the middle. Then it's a windsock, and I'm going to look for that. And I'm also going to tell these guys I'm over the head at 1,700 feet. And of course, traffic sky to go over at 1,700 feet uh, westbound. So I'm looking at looking, and I'm also looking around for traffic because you don't have to have a transponder, and you don't have to have a radio to land at these airports. So that wind me looks pretty calm. It is, but it looks like it favors 1A. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up for a landing on runway 1A. Runway 1A traffic pattern is to the it's a right downwind. And again, I'll get into detail on that. I'll get into total detail of that. But now what I'm doing is I'm just descending down a pad, pad of altitude. And I want to look behind me. I don't see anybody there. I don't see anybody on this ADSB. Doesn't mean that they're not there. Left down wind, departing to the north, east, Friday Harbor. And yeah, my sister lives right there. <laughs> How do I know? Because I've done a lot of yard work up there before. Uh, okay, so we're descending down to pattern altitude. Enter on the right 45 downwind at 1200 feet. Alrighty, so making the turn. And of course, traffic sky at 2 and echo is entering on the right 45 downwind for 18. So 18's the runway we're landing on. That's the 45. Traffic so that's 45 degrees. Charlie, that's 45 down, degrees. Down, degrees. Three, four, now I'll turn downwind. downwind. Downwind is a beam in the uh, opposite direction of what you're landing. What you're landing. All right, so now I'm going to slow it down. Time to slow it down. No reason to keep going super fast when you're going to land. All right, 1,200 feet change, slowing down. First 10 degrees of flaps. And of course, traffic sky act two and echoes right down to N18. So again, self-announcing to everybody. I don't hear anybody out here, but that doesn't mean that they're not out here. Again, it's not a requirement to have a radio to land an airport like this and again that's all part of the part of the video and communications is you know what are the requirements to get in and out of airspace what are the requirements to fly in their airspace and different types all right and of course traffic sky two and that goes right base one eight all right all my lights are on clear on the left 20 degrees of flaps slowing down Clear out there, clear on final. And there we go. 30 degrees of flaps. And of course, traffic sky act two and echoes final one eight. All right. And again, I'm sure you've seen a million YouTube videos, but that pappy on the right side, two red, two white, means you're on the glide path. Three red, one white, means you're starting a little bit low. Once you have the runway environment, you see your clear trees, you can go below it. And then that's a different video as well. Okay, coming in, runway 18. And we're down. All right, decelerating straight ahead. I don't like trying to turn off the runway when you're still going fast and just leave all the flaps and stuff. Don't touch anything until you get off the runway. And of course, traffic sky two and echoes clear of 1-8. All right, now I'll get the flaps up, landing lights off, all that sort of thing. The reason you want to touch the flaps, I think I've said it in another video, is uh, 
um, you don't do it in the triple seven. You don't do anything until you get off the runway, you know. And the reason is, is if you, well, the reason is, is guys have done this. <laughs> is they reach over for the flap handle. Traffic scott, 19, and, uh, Charlie, five and uh, five mile final runway and low approach. The guy hits the gear handle, you know, and retracts the gear, and then, uh, yeah, there you go. Now your landing gear just retracted, and boom, there goes your prop, there goes your engine, there goes everything else. So anyhow, we're just gonna park it here for a sec, and. And uh, yeah, so that's basically just a flight from A to B. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll get into the whole detail of how all these different airspaces work. It's what I'm doing for the next five days. So anyway, I hope you like the vid. Um, it's a cool video to put together. I've wanted to do it for a long time. So I uh, just got to figure out what the price is. <laughs> like I said, if it's good. 49.95, probably 39.95. I, I like that number better because flying is expensive enough. But you know, if I I'm gonna put 10 hours in shooting this video or something like that, so nice to get it. Anyhow, the other thing too, James Ketchell still over in Alaska or still over in Anadir, Russia, getting ready to head over this way. So I'm just watching him. James Ketchell, uh, subscribe to his YouTube channel. He's a cool guy heading this wave, and man, he's, he's you know flying that gyrocopter around the world. He's just right about ready to head from Russia over to the, yeah, Alaska. And that's a huge undertaking. So anyhow, talk to you later. See ya.